Alyssa. Yes, let's take a look now at the Super Pipe final roster. And as we said before, Sean White said he wasn't going to come, then showed up, and then decided uh, 24 hours before the Games event, I'm not going. I need to train for the Olympics. So we will see a new gold medalist for the first time in seven years, Kier. It'll be pleasant, to say <laughs> the least. Well, it's a uh, lot of talent up there. Anyone's for the taking. And uh, Greg Bretz will be kicking things off. The format is as follows. We've got eight riders, each one getting three runs. We didn't out the best score. All right, Greg Bretz. You know, he came out of the gate strong this year, taking Sean White down in the first contest. Let's see if he can continue that here tonight. To the cab double cork, so back-to-back -back double corks. It's a nice frontside 900 so far, piecing together a beautiful run here. Judges love seeing the combination. Now, can he mix up his spins? 1080. Wow, hold on to spinning back to back, double court 1080s, back to back 900s, and then back to back 1080s. He was spinning though, front side cab, front side cab. So you will, you will see later riders that are able to throw in backside spins. Really show that they can spin all four directions. But look at the amplitude here. That first one with the double cork, and then following it up, the combinations. Judges love seeing you start off with your hardest tricks, and then ending well with the 1080 at the bottom. Also showing that you can keep your amplitude. Greg Bretz didn't make the Olympic half pipe team by accident here. <laughs> Clearly. Our, 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 uh, Athletes are so strong in the U.S., there is, there's no accidents. That's right. Some had to get lopped off because we're so deep in 89.33. The bar has been set by Bretz and a good first run score. And we move on to rider number two. An X Games rookie, Yiwei Zhang, Chinese, 21 years old, our lone Chinese rider here in the field. I was just watching some video footage of where he took second to iPod at the Arctic Challenge in 2013. Blew my mind. So I cannot wait to see when he pulls out for us tonight. He is not scared to go big. Wow. <laughs> Starting things off. It's a beautiful double cork coming in backwards now. Look at this run, the double crippler into the backside spin. Showing that he has versatility in being able to spin all directions, doing single chords and double chords. Yep, that's, uh, that's what we like to say, um, that dust off any sort of nerves and really set you up for run two and three. Showing no signs of making his X Games debut. Jong with amplitude for days. Look at this, huge. Huge method. Coming in hot, just harnessing wow. it. And you can see as he comes up the wall, locks his edge into the ice that Alyssa was talking about, and then the double crippler. You know, most freestyle riders do not put bevel, you know, they do not put the extra bevel in their edges, but it helps so much to climb these walls. That's more of a technique that racers use. So Iwe awaits his first score of his first run of his first X Games, an 81.66. So that's good for second place. But of course, we've only had two riders in so far. But up next, dropping in on his first run, the Aussie rider, Scotty James, making his second X Games appearance. Yeah, rookie here in Aspen, right. although he was in Tina. He represented there, but not able to make the final. So his first final. Welcome, Scotty. And he would be the first Australian male rider to get gold and join a fellow countryman, Tora Bright. Tora Bright, that's right. So no pressure, Scotty. <laughs> None at all, 19 years old. What do you got for us? The regular footer dropping in to the double crippler. 
backside 900. So good top half here. I want to see a little more aggression out of him as far as the amplitude. Oh, nice alley 540 at the bottom. We saw Caitlin Farrington throwing that trick, and it's so hard to come out of it clean and smooth, as you just saw there, that little bobble there in the landing. Take a look at his third hit. Grabbing the tail for a nice 1080. And his final hit. Yeah, the alley-oop rodeo. Notice how he's spinning one direction, traveling the other as he drifts down the pipe. He's like spinning up, but falling back. And a little bit of a hand drag there. That's going to cost him, but that's why they give him three runs. There you see the Aussie representation on both cheeks as he awaits his first run score. And Kier were three riders in and two Aspen uh, rookies, a 65 for third, but that just goes to show you a real youth movement in the pipe right now, and it's amazing to watch. Oh, yeah. Kids are hungry, <laughs> to say the least, these days. Louis and a man that is hungry, Louis Vito. I mean, one of the most dedicated riders to this sport, really making a go for the Olympics. And the way that he trained and everything that he put into it. And I loved it because he's like, I just don't want any regrets. Right. And he pulled double duty this weekend as co-host of the X Games. So you know it was tough to balance. But let's see what he's got in run number one. Starting off with a nice tripper and a little tweak in there as well, showing total control. Oh, oh going Louis. down Michael Chuck. So Louis not able to put it together. He'll keep going here on run number one, but that's why they get three attempts here, Kier. But let's take another look. Started off solid with this double crippler. Amplitude was nice. Coming across for the double Michael Chuck. It's all about getting this pop off of your heels on the icy wall. Right. So if there's any sort of like slide out on your heels, it makes it pretty much impossible to pull it all the way around. But Louis going for it. And his this, the axis that he's spinning on is so stylish. Louis Vito actually won a gold medal in Tina just uh, last year. So he's technically the last X Games competitor to win a gold medal. Yeah. And the only one in the field to have one. Right. He also does have a bronze medal. So up next, dropping into the pipe, the Vermont native Benji Farrow. Living and spending time in Breckenridge, Colorado. Goes up to Mount Hood, make sure he can keep his game tight. You see iPod coming up the stairs. So Benji Farrow is making his third X Games appearance. He's yet to earn a medal. Will that change tonight? Run number one. And Benji. Oh, beautiful. Starting things off solid here. And unfortunately, just like that, a double cork can just take away all your speed if you can't keep it together in the flat bottom. You know, we're always paying attention to them in the air, but really most of the work happens from the second you land down the wall, down the wall, across the flat bottom, and up the next wall. Like, that's really where Kelly Clark, Sean White, the guys that go huge, are really able to take advantage of the half pipe. Well, Benji Farrow is putting together a nice attempt before a sketch landing on the final hit. Let's take a look up top. Going for the double cork. And see that little slide out there with the bobble? Kind of kills your run, even though he's still able to pull off some amazing tricks at the bottom, but it's still, those are warm-ups. So Farrell's score coming in, a 23.33. That puts him into fourth place. Vito's previous score, by the way, a 10.66, putting him in fifth place. But now dropping in for his very first X Games final, Danny Davis, which is crazy to say, Kier, when you think of how long he's been doing it and the fact that he's an Olympic team member here for the U.S. Halfpipe team. Yeah, we call it uh, peaking at the right time, <laughs> and it's so impressive because his focus is, is like just like Louis Vito, he's so focused, but for him, he's like, you know what? I just want to be back right. to being where I know I should be, and if I can accomplish that, then I know that I'm going to perform well. As you said, part of the U.S. Olympic snowboard team, they're with Greg Bretz, Dan 
Taylor Gold and Sean White. Right. And uh, let's see what he has for us, because it's always something a little special. Coming into his backside wall, a huge backside 360. Into the switch method. Oh, actually, <laughs> reverting it. Right now, I think he's making it up. That's called skills on the fly. Those top two tricks, although looking very simple, extremely difficult. What's he got for us? Double crippler. Ooh. And uh, that switch method, uh, and then he was like, no, I am way bigger than I expected to be. Well, that's what helped him get on the Olympic team, but let's take another look. So the highest of the cops so far, backside 360, and it comes in with the switch method. It's like, oh wait, no, no, revert that. It's switch backside 360. Textbook twist. Frontside double court 1080, combos that into another 1080. And having trouble right here with the crippler. Holding on, but again, judges, they're like, um, you cannot touch the snow. So Danny, good run. He held it together, but uh it looks like his, his, his binding. Yeah, did his foot come out of his binding? Yeah, it looked let's let's go down to Alyssa who's with Danny. Yeah, Danny, what happened on that last hit with your binding? Uh, I don't know, a little foot slipped out. <laughs> um, but get her fixed up and on for the next one. But either way, either way, this is your first finals, which is unbelievable what it's like to get finished with at least one run of X Games finals. <laughs> Feels good. Got two more. So we'll just uh, we'll put one down and have some fun. All right, see you up there. Guys. Thank you, Eliza. That is what we would call winging it here. <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, we keep on rolling here with the first attempts. Ben Ferguson dropping in. He also an X Games rookie. Yeah, and I love Ben, his style, the way that he just attacks the half pipe. He was so close to making the team. But he said we have a stacked field in the US and so not able to do so. So, Ben, here's your stage. Show the world what you're made of. Notice how far he traveled on that double crippler into the backside. 900. Oh! Whoa. Why not just pop it off? Uh oh. Little trouble there, unfortunately, that bobble. And it's just like that. It's you could be flawless the whole way down, and then just one trick, you're like, oh. Well, let's my. take another look because he did get the highest of the comp on his third hit, I believe. So here you see the first. Nice double crippler. And here's the third. Look at this air. He just popped and wow. exploded off the lip there with the 720, setting himself up, coming in switch now. Love that view. That is amplitude defined. So Ben Ferguson, maybe a nice preview though of what's to come as he did qualify second overall, 17 feet on the dot. His score coming in at a 49.33, jumping him up into fourth place. So here he is, our top ranked qualifier, Yori Podlachikov, 25 years old from Switzerland. And he wants this gold medal. The first to land, obviously, the cab, double cork, 1440. The YOLO flip, as you might know it. Born in Russia, but representing Switzerland in the Sochi Games. He's smart. <laughs> he's not, you know, he's like, I heard they got banks over there in Switzerland. They're <laughs> crazy. Well, let's see if we can, if he's going to pull out the YOLO flip for us tonight. Will he wait and try to land a mellow run? Or is he just going to go for it? Um, Selfishly speaking, I hope he just goes for it. It's better to get three chances than to right. get a you know mediocre run and say, you don't need any more silver. You need some gold, buddy. Very good point. He already does have two silver medals, and there just seems to be something about him here at X Games Aspen 2014. Things we saw during eliminations, things we're seeing in practice that just make me feel like there's something special in store for iPod. All right, buddy, drop it in. Um, perfectly executed method there, 18 feet out to the front side, 540, setting himself up. 
Backside 900, he's gonna have to turn it on. This is very similar to his qualification run. Coming in, switch. And there it is! Oh! No. We knew it was gonna be busted out. Yep. But hey, he has three chances. I respect that, that he's saying, you know what, I really do want gold, and I know to get gold, I have to pull this trick out. Well, let's go down to Alyssa, who's with iPod now. All right, Yuri, I know you want to land that. You landed in teen. I know you want to land it here. What will happen on that hit? Uh, I'll land it a little deep on that front double. It's a pretty tough combo combination. Uh, but it should work. Uh, I just bobbled before it, and uh, if I get a clean setup. How important is it to you to land that YOLO flip out here at X Games in Aspen? Uh, it's very important. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's just, it's been working well so far, and uh, got two more tries, and I really want to land it for you guys and for myself, of course. All right, let's see it. Guys, back up to you. We've got two more tries. Thank you, Alyssa. Yep, Podlachikov just missing out on that, but a nice preview of what's to come. A 30 on the dot puts him in the sixth place. Well, an electric crowd out here at Aspen for the fourth and final night for X Games. It's the marquee event, Men's Snowboard Super Pipe Final. Here we are one run in, and Greg Bretz, who kicked things off, is still in the lead with an 89.33. But Kier, Greg is no stranger to leads. He's no stranger to wins. Here just over a month ago, at Breckenridge, the Dew Tour, putting it down, beating Sean White. Yeah, he really took time this summer to dedicate himself to getting his body strong and prepare himself for battles like that. Sean a little beat up with the ankle, but Greg's like, hey, I can do this. You are human, you are not immortal. Brett says, I've been here before. This stage is not too big. In his sixth X Games appearance, still in search of his first X Games medal. Well, sitting with the 89, and Greg also has a double Mc, uh, double McTwist 1260. He has a double core 1260, so he can up the difficulty of his run here. Let's see if he's able to pull it off. Now that's a great point. When you put up a first score like that and you're in the lead and you know you've got more to put down, it's good to see. Looking for him to mix it up though. Can he pull something? So far, this is the same run that he threw his first one. And he's like, I'm just gonna do it again. And you know, respectfully speaking, it is only two weeks away from the Olympics. So depending on how comfortable he is with his double cork 1260, he's like, hey. No, that is a good point, Kieran, one worth making. The fact is, he is on the U.S. Olympic team. Obviously, winning a medal here at X Games is huge, but how much closely does he want to keep things to the vest and keep himself safe, thinking about Sochi in just a couple of weeks? Yeah, and he's sitting in the lead right now. He's like, hey, if I need it, I'll pull it out. Greg Sr. right there. Dedicated so much time and energy supporting Greg right there, you know, he, Mammoth pretty much raised him. That's the truth. The Mammoth native, Greg Bretz, and 87 on the dot. So let's bring on the head judge out here. Yes, we have that type of access. Tom Zikas. Tom, that second run for Greg looking very similar to the first. I can see how that affected his score. Yeah, you know, uh, same run, but uh, mostly what we saw was that little bobble on the back nine, so uh, causing it to go, score to go down a bit. Thank you, Tom. We will be checking in with you throughout the evening. How great is that, huh? You can just bring on the head judge anytime we want to talk scores. Don't agree with it? Well, we'll just pull Tom in and see what he has to say. Well, here's Iwe Zhang, the X Games rookie, 21 years old, put down a solid 81.66 in his first run. Yeah, he came out. One of two to land their run, pretty much. Yep. Robin in. As he said, goes big. Attacking these balls. Look at how flawless and huge that frontside double court 1080 is, and then comboing it into Massive. the mirror image of it. Double crippler. Oh. Unfortunately, 
Although the walls are 22 feet high, a couple inches out and you drop so much further. Gosh, Kier, I really wanted to see him. He was on one here. Let's take another look. <laughs> Huge method. Kick things off. And then the, these combos, the front side double corks at the top, but then the fall here, the crippler, is sending it too far down to landing. Let's take another look. Pops it off. One flip, two. And you want to really land on your heel edge and lock it in. And he went heels to toes. and. So a 26 for Iwe, and he will hold on to his first score of 81.66 as he stays in second place. Now dropping in our current third place rider, Scotty James. Scotty again, of course, is making his Aspen debut. We did see him in France last year. But this is a whole new stage, Kier. <laughs> Indeed it is. The crowd is out on both sides of the wall at the bottom. The pressure, he knows that you can make a name for yourself just like that, like Max Perot. He had a good first run. He just had that hand drag at the very bottom, so take note of that. Starts off just as he did before with the double crippler. Scotty James with the amplitude. It's the 1080 across coming in switch now to the cab double cork. And here's the idea of can you land it? Oh, Got it. And butters it in, just lays it down smooth. The hammer has dropped. Scotty James nailing that second run, exactly what he was looking for. Take another look. Comes in there. Double cork 1080, and then the last hit this is where he had problems before. Locks the grab in, oozing with style. He's like, let me just get this thing. Perfect. Stomping it out. So after scoring a 65 on his first run, we rate his mom, run to dad, score. As as Will he jump up? There you see in the athlete <laughs> Danny Davis and iPod as they await for run number two. But let's head down to the course where Alyssa is with Scotty. We are a lone Australian in the field celebrating Australia Day. Uh, talk about that run and what do you have for us in this in this third and final run? Yeah, I was super stoked. Uh, I, I didn't put down my first run. It was a bit of a bummer, but I'm so stoked to come out and land that second one and celebrating Australia Day today. Super stoked, as you can tell, I got my face tattoos on. So I quickly shout out to my mom, my dad, Tim, Beck, everyone back at home in Warren night celebrating and they're watching from home. So happy Australia Day, everyone. So Scotty, your score's in, you're in second place. You think you have something more to bump you back up into that first spot? Uh, I'm not too sure at this point. I'm gonna have to, I uh, think it's something at the top, I'll work with my coach Abe and try to sort something out. But yeah, well, hopefully we'll see what happens. All right, so good luck on your last run, guys. Back up to you. An 85.33 for James, jumping him up in the silver medal position. Kier, I had no idea it was an Australia day. Wait, you're not up, you're not up on your days? <laughs> you know when Canada day is? Expecting cake or something. Come on. So a great showing on his second run there for Scotty James. And Yori Podlachikov, he came oh so close to landing the YOLO flip on his first run. Kier, you feel like we're gonna see this thing landed tonight. Oh yeah, I'm a betting man and if anybody wants to bet, please let me know, I'm taking them. He pulled it off in practice and he's just determined. He's gonna make it happen. Sometimes you just gotta muscle it in there. Yeah, the run was great prior to that, so we know that's all that it is missing. As he knows it's time to get up soon. But dropping in next, the co-host here at X Games, Louis Vito. And again, I can't say enough about the Ohio kid. He's got a bronze, he's got a gold from France this past year. And it just feels like the time is right for him to get the top spot. And I'm kind of jealous because he gets to do two of his most favorite things, shred <laughs> and talk. And not necessarily in that order. All right, double crippler. He had trouble here before. Does he get it? Oh, initiates the pop, able to pull it around, using a little bit of speed to see if he can regain it. 
then able to do the combination of the double corks. A setup here, what he got for us? A backside 900, so double Michael Chuck, the backside spin. And look at Team Vito. Louis's entire family out here checking it out in a great second run for LV. Let's take another look. Well, comes in, starts off with his patented double crippler with a little tweak there, letting the judges know, hey, I got this. But it, really, that was the impressive trick, the double Michael Chuck. And from there, it's just cruising. You know what I love about this run here? His credential flying out the entire attempt. We call that the extra flair. <laughs> so Vito, after struggling in his first run, look at this. Locks in the grab, full commitment. Notice completely breaking the horizontal axis there, showing that he's fully going upside down. So after falling on his second hit in his first attempt, he puts together a dynamite second run. This will definitely push him up the leaderboard while he's currently in eighth place. We await his score. So from a trick perspective, that was on par, if not better, than the other runs. It just comes down a to 93 the... A 93 on yep. the dot. We have we a new it. leader, Louis Vito, putting it down. Well, let's go down to Alyssa, who's with our new leader. All right, Lou, you're a new leader. What does it feel like to be leading X Games? One run left. <laughs> you know, I'm just happy I landed, you know. I really enjoy riding with Greg. You know, we talked up top after my run, and kind of pumped me up. I got JJ and everyone up there. We got a fat crew and it's just fun, man. I love X Games and I love how many fans we got out here. That's what it's all about. So do you have something more for this last run? We'll see. <laughs> it wasn't quite what I was planning, but a little improvised. But like I said, I'm just having fun. I can only control what I do and I'm stoked I got hooked up. But you know, there's a lot of good riders left to go. Great, thanks Louie. Thank well, if that's improv, it's, I, I'm scared to see what we have for attempt number three. Well, Harley-Davidson just came out with a new motorcycle, and they want to use this bike in an X Games race in 2015. Check this out. It always kind of has you on your edge of your seat because it's so close and so intense. What better thing to watch, you know, six, seven, eight guys or girls going after it. The speeds that we get on the ice is by far fast. You're racing side by side with four or five other people at a time. You know, sometimes you can't even fit a sheet of paper between me and the next guy. The fans, their hair is going to stand up on their arms when we go by a man up in the mouth and now we're next to each other. I think X Games needs something like this. What's a better win in sport than being, uh, you know, on the ice and not to mention being on a motorcycle? Welcome back. It's the men's snowboard superpipe, the final event here on the final day at X Games Aspen. And Kier, this has really been an amazing performance from top to bottom. Dropping Louis Vito Benji just Farrow. taking the lead there on his second run, but dropping in now, Benji Farrow. Benji Farrow looking to get a full pull here. He is not in the Olympics, so it's a good opportunity for him take advantage of the stage. This is his third X Games appearance, still looking for that first medal. Megan Vermont proud. Ooh. And when you come in hot like that, double court, unfortunately landing deep, man. Uh, there you see Louis Vito getting some love from the crowd. And for good reason, he absolutely stomped his last run. Let's look side by side here, Louis, and then uh, the guy he leapfrogged, Greg Bretz. Yeah, both of their runs were perfectly executed. Louis starting off with the double crippler, then the double Michael Chuck, which I feel is one of the key areas that he differentiated himself because no other rider in the field is doing that trick. But Greg also able to go combo combo. He went. Double tens, then he went to the tens, then he went to the nines, but Louis 
just able to make it up by differentiating his run a little bit. It wasn't so back-to-back. -back. So Louis said with Alyssa that he wasn't sure what else he had in store. <laughs> it sounded like some things were even improv. Knowing these two guys and the way they ride, can we expect something different from each of them on the third attempt? I think both of them, like you said, he's, I think he made that up on the fly. And Greg Bretz has more tricks. He's got the double court 1260. So when you're this close, might be time to pull it out. Bretz and Vito, of course, very good friends. So it's cool to see those two challenging one another. But Vito is in the top spot. Bretz in second and Scotty James holding down third position. But still plenty of snowboarding to go. And here is Danny Davis sitting in sixth position on his second attempt. Well, we saw Danny drop in with the backside 360. He was going for the switch method. He had to mix it up and then had to bobble at the bottom. So let's see if he can keep it together from top to bottom. Ooh, styly backside 360 coming in backwards. Oh, probably one of the best switch methods we have ever seen. Into the 1080. Double crippler, Danny. Nailing he's it. on one right now. And look at the front side double cork. And he's like, yes. yep. Hey, there's more than a few Danny Davis fans out here in Aspen. And you know it's a great run when his boot stays in the binding. Yeah, I mean, it helps when you, uh, <laughs> you know, when your boot is in there. I mean, I'm so impressed with his first two hits. Drops in with so much speed. Backside 360. And then notice your blind right there. Laying it in, able to find a top of the lip, and then a second hit switch method. Oh yeah, what style! Easy for Danny Davis. That's a big reason why he's on the U.S. Olympic team. And bringing back the McTwist, and then he's like, if you don't think I can actually do the doubles, well, yeah, I can. Here you go. Perfectly executed. Frontside double cork 1080 and just stomps it. Look at his switch method. I mean, it's like Ross Powers in Park City all over again, oh but he's doing gosh. it backwards. You ever thrown a fastball with your left hand if you're right-handed? That's exactly what it feels like. Well, let's head down to Alyssa, who's with Danny once again. Yeah, Danny, last four years you've been through so much, so many injuries. What does it feel like to lay down a run like that? What does it say about where you are right now? It says that uh, I'm having a good time and riding, riding as good as I've uh, ridden, I think. Um, and the pipe's so good tonight, so yeah. that really helps. You know, we've been talking about these icy walls, the transition. How tough is it to hold an edge and throw the kind of tricks you're throwing? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Danny Davis, our new leader. We have a new leader. Thank you, Alyssa. A 95 on the dot. Kier, can you believe it? Uh, yes, I can. As you're saying, the walls are so icy, so that makes even those switch tricks so much harder on your heel edge to come in like that. Uh, and the judges clearly understand the difficulty because they rewarded it. And as he said, it's, um, I'm feeling good. And that's his key to success is when he's able just to perform where he's having fun, the, the rest just falls into place. A great run for Danny Davis, putting him into gold medal position. One of the best dudes in snowboarding, Danny Davis in the top spot in his first ever X Games final. Dropping in next, the X Games rookie, Ben Ferguson. Ben having trouble, unfortunately, on his first run. Let's see if he can keep it together, top to bottom. These riders are now figuring it out. They got the, the jitters out. Ben starting off with the huge crippler. And then the combo into the 900. Ben Ferguson clearly <laughs> making this pipe his playground. Nice double cord, a little bit of a bobble there. What do you got for his last hit? alley -oop. So, despite the bobble, a solid second run for Ben Ferguson. He's got to feel good about that. It's always nice to be able to pull it off and just explodes wow. on that front side 720. The setup for the cab, double cork. Lands a little low. You want to lock your edges in. But Ben's got to feel good about that run. Ferguson, who hails from Bend, Oregon, 
19 years old. He qualified second overall, so we know he's got the tricks to get on the podium. After a disappointing 49.33, he jumps up with an 87, putting him into fourth place. And what's great about that, Kier, is there's some little things to clean up in that run. Oh, yeah, and you, you can tell that uh, speed's not an issue, right? so he just needs to give it a little more amplitude, clean up the landings, but this man right now, the YOLO, you got two tries, Mr. iPod. Right, Yori Podlachikov after posting a 30 on his first run, and the bar has obviously been set for him. He knows his run. If he can land that YOLO flip, a 95 is what he needs to get if he wants that first place position. And what I love about it is he's not doing like a setup 720 into the YOLO. He's really, he's throwing the 1080 into the YOLO. Right. He's like, I want that combination. I want to show that I can piece these together. And he's off. Nice method, a little hand wobble there in the air. Keeping his amplitude up. And Yori. Just on track like he was in run number one, but it all comes down to that final hit. There it is, can he pull it? Oh, so close. Closer than he was in run one. Indeed, it's the cat, it's it's the front side double court 1080. It just it it just makes it so much harder right. than to come into it. Well, it's walk so us through this here. Takes off, switch. Spins four full rotations, upside down twice to see where he, he looks like he's just lacking a little bit of the extra rotation. He's That's coming at like 14 instead of 1440. Right. He spots his landing and right there he needs to swivel his hips. Yep. And I feel like he might not have gotten the, the pop because he was right, right on the, the yep. razor edge of the top and then where the wall dips in. No, great analysis. He's getting closer. We saw him do it at practice. We saw him do it last year. Another, th it's a 31 for Yori, so uh, a point better than his previous run. We'll see if he'll be able to bust that out in his third run. Danny Davis in his first X Games final has the lead. Let's take a look at the leaderboard here for the Superpipe final. It's Danny Davis in the gold medal position, followed by Louis Vito and Greg Bretz topping out the podium of course we still have one more attempt to go for each rider a lot on the line here Kier, as greg bretz drops in for his third and final attempt well, let's see if greg is happy with his 89 or if he says you know what i'm gonna make this happen and pull out these tricks that i know that i have he's got a front side 12 he's got front side 1260 as well he can replace with that the front side nine if he really wanted to right. so Let's see what you got, Greg. And here's where you can do the front side 12. He's like, nope, I'm gonna do the uh, front side nine. So Greg Bretz's night ends there as he waves to the crowd. He stays, at least for the moment, in that third place bronze medal position. Hey fans, don't forget, X Games Extra begins immediately following our telecast. Nick Yepper and other gold medalists will be joining us. Log on now to submit your questions and become a part of the conversation. Love that, X Games Extra. It's xgames.com. So Bretz, after falling midway through his third run, still sits in third position, but still plenty more attempts to go. Mr. Jung looking to up his score of an 81. And as we said, we've seen that he has the skills, which is can you pull it right now? General course. Boosting a nice method, starting things off strong. Huge friends that double court wow. 1080 now into the combo of that. Stomping it. See if he can add some aggression to his riding here. Oh! Oh! Wow. Hitting hard there, Kier. Let's take another look as the rest of the riders and some of the guys in the athletes lounge having the same reaction as you and I. And that that looked like a bounce, Kier. 
double barrel roll. It was double crippler, double barrel roll. I don't know if I've ever seen that trick. Let's take another look. Pops it off, it just took off too early, didn't wait to the top of the lip. Caused wow. him to be on the deck side of it, and I'm just so surprised he's able to like suck it up like that. Amazing that he was able to oh. keep the board up and not fall. Yeah, the board just flexing. Yeah, bend, don't break. It's all about the initiation. It takes so much resistance to take off early when you know you have to do two right. flips. Well, that was a 52 score there, but uh, he was well on his way to, to looking like potentially a, t a top three run there. Oh, yeah. The judges would have scored that double barrel roll nicely. So Scotty James, who's sitting in fifth place, Again, this is his first time competing at Aspen. 19 years old, from Australia, on Australia Day of all nights to be competing in a final here. It all comes down to opportunity. Trying to replace an 85.33, which he had on his previous run. He got bumped out of the third spot. Let's see if he can get back into the podium position. The Aussie suite there, or as we like to call it, the Scotty James VIP room. <laughs> Afterwards, he's just chilling. <laughs> so here's Scotty James dropping in for his third and final attempt. Starting off with a double crippler, a little tweak in there. Oh, he's like, wait a second, I have one of those too. Able to execute it perfectly. Putting a nice run together here on his final attempt. Oh yeah, mixing it up, combos into a beautiful alley-oop five. And he's pumped on that. So Scotty James, after posting an 85.33, puts together an even better third attempt as we take another look. We start off with the double crippler. Then he's like, I can do the double barrel roll as well. So great combination to kick things off for the top of his run. Says Iwe, let me show you how to do this. He had a little bobble before this hit, and then spins the alley-oop. <laughs> That's pure joy right there oh, from yeah. Scotty James. There's not too many better feelings than landing the run that you wanted to land. So he sits currently in fifth place as we await his score on his final run. It's been an amazing crowd out here at X Games Aspen as you take a look at the numbers. And wow, yesterday, Saturday, 48,000 people in attendance. That's a single day winter X record here. And uh, the crowds here in Aspen, always amazing year after year. Yeah, so supportive on so many levels. An 88 for Scotty James, jumps him up into fourth, but just out of podium position. Are you surprised by that? Oh, well, Greg had a pretty solid run with that one, his first run. Um, I think the judges got it right. Yeah. Well, Scotty James really putting it down. A great third run, keeping his head up high in 88 as he's in fourth place. But here now, currently in second place, looking for his first gold in Aspen. Of course, he did win a gold in France last year. Louis Vito. This is his final chance to get in to the top spot. Ups his amplitude, looks like on the first hit. Louis said he had to improvise last run, so let's see if he can land the run that he wanted to know. Ah, but look at him smiling. So he'll try to get a couple more hits in here. So Louis Vito, not quite the run he was looking for on his third attempt. But hey, silver is not too bad if he's able to Hold Stay on in that to position. It. Absolutely. So, Louis Vito, as we take another look, he was in second place. He'll stay there. A 16 on the dot. But let's see where it went wrong here. Drops in. Look at that. Having fun with the double crippler. And then, as I said, the Michael Chuck jumping off of your heels. Extremely difficult. That's what allowed him to get the good score of the 93 on a second run. Unfortunately, what takes him down in his third run. Ah, oh, 
yes, the most critically claimed film of all time, Dumb and Dumber, our favorite, Children of the 90s Rejoice, Danny Davis killing it. You can see all the clips on xgames.com. It is good to be Danny Davis right now, Kier, as a 95 has him as our overall leader with just three more attempts to go to overtake him. Yeah, and it's so great to see that video because it's such a reflection of just him. I mean, he's full of creativity, reflected in his riding, and obviously he likes to have a good time. <laughs> that he does. One of the best guys in this sport. So dropping in next, Benji Farrow. He's been unable to put a run together after posting scores of 23.33 and 6.66. What's he got on his third and final attempt? Receiving pull together, starting on strong. He fell there on the first hit, uh, last run. He did have a tough practice to so see if he can shake everything away. Already looking stronger than his previous two attempts. Nice frontside 900. Like Tom said, they want to see him mix it up. And with the double court, but the hand drag. I was just gonna say, he picked a great time to put together that type of run, but that hand drag's gonna hurt him, Kier. Yeah. So hard to get top to bottom. Let's take another Let's take look. Take a look. Initiates it. And just not committed to fully rotating it. Plus, the wall starts to fade away down there, so might have messed with his head a little bit. He's like, oh. Where's my pipe wall going? But just not committed. His hips were not were not closed in the proper way to be able to ride away. So Pharaoh's Woo! night ends. There you see Mackenzie, Benji's girlfriend, showing support as he awaits his final run score. And again, there are just two riders left that can best Danny Davis. But Farrell posting a 59, so he jumps up one spot into seventh place, at least temporarily putting Yuri Podlachikov into the eighth and final spot. Shockingly. Well, Danny Davis still leading here in the men's snowboard superpipe final. And an incredible story in his first X Games final ever. And while he is holding on to the top spot, at least temporarily, he does at least be ensured that he will be getting his first X Games medal no matter what. But what shade, what type of medal will it be, Kier? Well, you know, there's definitely a difference between the three, even, <laughs> even on the stock market. But Danny has more. He has a switch alley-oop that he can throw at the bottom. He actually has a switch double alley-oop McTwist, or double alley-oop rodeo. He pulled that one off in Mammoth four years ago when he beat Sean White. I don't think we'll see that tonight, but let's see if he throws the switch alley-oop rodeo, because that could help him distance himself from the field just in case iPod lands that YOLO. Well, let's see our current leader. What's he got for his third and final run? Notice how he just switched up his run there. He raised the backside three, went into the switch method. I think we're going to see the alley-oop. Huge double Whoa. triple. Into the McTwist. All right. And see how he gives himself room at the bottom there to be able to pull this trick. And Kier, the switch. crowd is going nuts right now. And for good reason, he showed so much skill there. His drop-in, a little 180 subtle drop-in to be able to do the switch method. Is that enough to best his second run of 95? Let's take a look at that double crippler. Huge, and just butters it in. Then down to the front side, double cork 1080, spinning it, fully committed. That's why he's able to lay it down. Watch, his hips in the perfect position here. Textbook. And then able to combo that into the switch alley-oop. Look at the grab. Oh. Perfect execution. Some people say he's got good style. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those people. Yes, I am too. So it, that is your current leader, Danny Davis, saying earlier this week that winning X Games would be more important to him than winning the Olympics. He's on his way if he can hold on, and it's a 93-6-6, so a solid third score. Not enough to trump his second run, but still, he is our leader.
Yeah, he changed it up there. Judges were like, you know what? We prefer the backside three into the switch method. The switch method on the second run was massive, but props for him mixing it up. But Ben is up next, has what it takes. He's had the ball, the, you know, not really that perfect run he's been looking for. Ben Ferguson is an X Games rookie. By the way, no rookie has won here in the pipe since 2001. Some guy named Danny Cass, last yeah. guy to do that. No, I, I heard he's pretty good too. <laughs> so here's Ben Ferguson on his third and final attempt. Does he have enough to get onto the podium? Coming in strong, same run that he's been throwing all night. It's just, can he up his amplitude? Can he boost big 720s Whoa. like that? Judges looking for excellence. Just under rotating that 1080 at the bottom. Well, the stage is set. So Yori Podlachikov is our final rider. He qualified first. We know he's got the run. It's that YOLO flip at the very end. And here, walk us through where he's been having trouble. He's coming in switch here. Leaning back, and then his second attempt, he just didn't get the pop that he needed. He was on the edge here. Watch, takes off. The spin isn't the problem. It was just he didn't push enough off of the wall. That is what will allow him to jump up. And you know, <laughs> huge feat if he's able to pull it off. There is this stat that I hate to even mention but no one besides Sean White has qualified first and been able then to grab gold. So can How you dare, dare he, you put the curse out he, there? Hey, it's not a curse, it's just a stat. Can he join Sean White? I mean, we're going into the Olympics, it's time to dig deep and show that you can handle it. Yuri, what do you got for us? Dropping in on his final attempt, a huge! And he looks smooth, his arms are so calm right now. Backside 900, pay attention to the setup here. Double McTwist, I'm sorry, the 1080 into it, Kenny, huge pop! Oh! No! What? That was like the butt fall, but no, really, oh. I pulled it. <laughs> if you blink, you might have missed it, Kenny. Yeah. Wow, so just barely missing. He got closer and closer each attempt as we take one more look here. Comes in switch, spins 1440. Look how big that wow. is. Wow. Uh, and oh, just as he did on his second run, was not able to push off the wall. So iPod unable to land this YOLO flip that might have put him into the gold medal position. But I tell you what that does do with that tiny miscue that ensures Danny Davis the gold medal here in the super pipe. Well, you know, Tom hasn't spoken yet, but let's see. There we see the reaction from our current leader. And I think they have the same as us. What happened? What happened? But there you see Louis Vito. He thinks he knows what went down. I don't know, Kier. I, it didn't look like a clean landing to me. I, I don't know how you could score that above Danny Davis. You know, you're picking this up quickly. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we await the judges' score here. Danny Davis with nerves of steel. And this is just a crazy, crazy finish, Kier. Yeah, this is what it's all about. iPod was the only guy who could catch Danny Davis on his third and final attempt. He says, hey, let me give it one more try. <laughs> and 83.33, and Danny Davis is your 2014 gold medalist. How's that gold feel, Danny? Wow, well, let's go down to Alyssa, who's with our winner. All right, Danny Davis, X Games gold medalist. How does that sound? Pretty darn good. I'm, um, I can't believe it, really. I'm going to ride this uh, switch method train as long as it'll last. <laughs> you said earlier in the week that it meant more to you to win the X Games here in Aspen than to win in Sochi. You've done one of those things. Do you still feel the same way? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's bittersweet when Sean's not here, you know? He's um, the one to beat, and, but forget it, I'll take it, you know? That's so like awesome. you said, we've got a couple of guys missing from the field tonight. They're not going to be missing in Sochi in a couple of weeks. What do we have in store for us in the Olympics? Um, well, as you saw tonight, there's going to be a lot of flipping and spinning. Um, there's going to be some, some air time. And, uh, well, I think you can tell that the Americans are looking pretty darn good. And, of course, one really great switch method, right? <laughs> yes. Guys, back up to you. Congratulations, Danny. Well, thank you, Alyssa. And just look at the pure joy on his face. And for good reason, he qualified for the Olympics four years ago when he beat Sean White got injured and has been fighting injuries over the years, but just the dedication and his love for the sport has allowed him to climb back up to the top. And just such respect there, as he said, Sean White not being here, he's like, you know, I want to battle the best, and I look forward to us being able to sh have a showdown. And let's take a look at what got it done. Amazing double court. Danny Davis finally shaking the monkey and walking away with gold. Louis Vito with silver and Greg Bretz. Bronze, as Danny said, American looking good. And this backside 360, nobody does that trick. And then the switch method, we heard Tom Zekas just talk about how difficult that trick is. The thing that I love is he has more. He knows he needs more. But to lay it down at X Games is so difficult to pressure. But it was Danny Davis's night. Mick Twist oozing with style. And gotta, t gotta give it up for the other riders. Louis Vito, Greg Bretz, iPod, all of them out here living their dreams, laying it on the line, pushing our sport.